So we get to 2010. Three years would pass since the White Album was released. And during the period of which this album was being recorded, the band would experience a legit nightmare. Drummer Jimmy the Rev Sullivan would pass away from a, a drug overdose, for, to my understanding, from what I've heard. Or actually, no, it was like a, I think it was a heart problem, I believe. There's so many things out there to try to, uh, to figure out what happened, and you just don't know which it, uh, it was. But as a result of the Revs passing, the band would ask help from one of the Revs' biggest drum drummer influences being Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater. Now we all now most of us metal fans or rock music fans or prog fans would know Mike Portnoy is one of the greatest drummers in the history of music. And Jimmy the Rev to ask uh, if anybody could replace him being him. I thought that was really really interesting. And when they asked for help, Mike said, "Sure, I'll definitely help you out because it, it is a sad situation what you guys are going through." So with this album, they would experience or they would actually experiment with different sounds, just like they did on their previous two albums. But this album was somewhat kind of going full circle back to how they would be during City of Evil. But this band would definitely take that and go a little more extreme with it and a little more experimental. And also the big thing is that this is arguably the darkest album they have ever made. And it's and the subtitle Nightmare definitely fit, fits this album. Not in a bad way, in a good way, because of just how masterful and how dark some of these songs are. Some of these songs are some of the band's best songs they've written. Like the song Nightmare, unless you heard on radio and you get that terrible edit, which I hate when it's on with certain songs that have curse words and they always edit out, sounds so stupid. But you get other tracks such as Welcome to the Family, which showcases dark lyrics, and songs such as Buried Alive that showcase a definite old-school 70s heavy metal sound or even hard rock sound from bands such as Sabbath and Zeppelin. This was the song that sort of was the heralding cry for what their next album was going to become. And on a ballad song such as So Far Away being a great tribute to the Rev's life and his legacy that he left behind for modern metal drumming. And this song was a beautiful song. Definitely is one that tears me up a little bit because we lost the Rev way too soon. He had so much more to do with his talents and everything like that. But then you would get on tracks such as God Hates Us, Victim, and tonight the world dies a natural born killer, you're definitely getting a lot of dark, brooding insanity going on with the lyrics and the music behind it. Like, God Hates Us was somewhat kind of like a retrospective back to their metalcore days by incorporating some of the growl, screamy vocals of the first two albums, but in minimal locations. But he had a deeper growl to his voice by this point when he showcased that cool part like it was kind of a death metal influence growl when you would hear it but then on songs such as fiction which which it was like a softer song that has a background vocal sound from jimmy the rev sullivan which was i think one of the last things he got to record with um this album but then the big highlight their longest song they've ever written at, about 11 minutes long. Save Me. You can definitely tell when Mike Portnoy came into the band, his influence was apparent on this track. This was their most progressive song, their darkest song, and you can, some people may argue, maybe their best. Because of the fact that you get a lot of progressive metal influence. Kind of like... And I commented when I heard this song on YouTube a little while back, I commented, it's as if Dream Theater, Avenged Sevenfold came together for a track and also incorporated some influence from 
what I heard from the Ghost Reveries album from Opeth, some of the tones and the darkness behind some of those songs kind of carried on in this song somewhat. It's like maybe as if Avenged Sevenfold were listening to Opeth around this time, and they took some of that dark, mysterious, brooding lyrics, lyrical vibes, as well as the, some of the heavy parts of this song, into this track, but with the intricate structuring of a Dream Theater track, but with the spirit of what you know as Avenged Sevenfold. But I c commend Mike Portnoy's drum performance on this album. It was top notch. He understood what the Rev, what the Rev did when he was in the band and did it his own way. Incorporated a lot of kick drum work on this album, and I just love his performance on this album. But overall, you could say musically this is their second best album behind City of Evil. For me, this would probably be my third favorite of the um, the bunch. Like, if I were to say favorites, it would be Waken the Fallen, then City of Evil, then Nightmare, then the White Album, then Hail to the King, and then Sounding the Seventh Trumpet. And speaking of Hail to the King, we would wait another three years, and the band would experiment, or would or not experiment, experience another lineup change. We wait three years, 2013, for their next album, Hail to the King, and we're going to see how they ended up changing. Stay tuned. 